You also have a force of evil. Hi. Are we on? Yes, we're on. It doesn't, it's not coming up on my stream. Oh, well, yay. Hello, watchers, runners, and gods of the time stream. Please dodge the ghost to your left, dodge the plate coming from your right, grab a chair conjure up a table and take a seat and join us in talking about all the things the dungeon run. <laughs> uh, I just got home from work. Sorry for the three minute delay. Um, I do have some fun things to announce before we dive into it because I know how we get. Um, first of all, everything, I know I've said it before and no, I never asked you guys to, but uh, everything that is prop wise given to this channel um, does get put back into the show. We're waiting for the um, force cards to come back and then everything is just gonna be full uh, onto the show. Um, so do don't, we're all here just to have fun. Uh, also, I have two very exciting uh, segments to introduce that we're going to be starting in the next couple of weeks. Uh, one of them is called uh, a blast from the past segment, which is basically going to be, uh, it's a little twist on our interview with the watcher segment. We're basically going to be interviewing a newer watcher who is not caught up to the show. And we're gonna be talking to them, you know, the usual, how they got into it, how they found the community. But we're gonna talk about whatever episode they're on and have a nice blast from the past. Get their predictions, see what they think is gonna happen. And it'll be fun for the rest of us who already know. The other really, really fun segment that I found out about not too long ago <laughs> is that uh, we're going to have a special watch party where Jeff is going to join us for a one-time special segment called Stump the DM. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we as a community are going to see if we can stump Jeff in 
the Dungeon Run Trivia. So there is a channel in the Discord that I believe is hopefully secret from the cast and Jeff. Uh, so you guys are allowed to go and submit questions and we're gonna kind of talk which, which questions we think are gonna be able to stump him. Um, so we're all in it. We're all gonna come up with questions together. Uh, and whenever that segment happens, it should be fun. I'm really excited to see if we can stump the DM. So that'll be fun. Um, since I've done a lot of talking, Ingrid, overall thoughts on the episode first. Get it, girl. Oh, it just, it kind of felt like uh, a combination of a couple of board games that I've played in life. I mean, we've all played, probably played Clue or at least understand what it's about. But there's one in particular board game that I've played and it's called House on the Hill. And it really, really felt like House Ooh. on the Hill. And it's, that's a really cool game. So I love that game. it kind of gave me a little bit of nostalgia of playing games with my friends, but it kind of in a D and D manner. So I thought it was kind of neat. Oh, that is neat. Uh, so I do want to properly uh, give the mall system. I used it last week, but didn't explain it. So the one to 10 mall system is something that actually Sean Patrick came up with. Uh, and he, we were talking in jest and I was like, that's really cute. I'm going to steal that. Um, and so uh, when you rate the episodes from one to 10 malls, 10 being that it was such a good episode. You're going to take your mall and hit everyone who doesn't watch it or hasn't seen it. And a one is it was so bad. You want to hit yourself in the head <laughs> before watching it. Uh, uh, for me, um, I, I'm in the same boat. I definitely had a lot of horror nostalgia coming on when I watched this episode. And uh, for me, it was it was very horror esque. I, I took it as the, the the weird comparison that came up in my head was um, weirdly the Grudge. Um, in the Grudge, the, the you know the premise of the story is that they they're going through this house and there's a bunch of like painful memories that the main character picks up in all these rooms and you're trying to figure out what happened there in this house. Uh, so. I, in my mind, that's where my mind went for this episode. Um, I don't think the episode landed with me as some of the past episodes did. Um, for me, I would give this episode 5.5 out of 10 malls. I would give okay. it 5.5 out of 10. But there were so many really, really, really cool things in this episode. So I want us to just dive on into it. Uh, for me, my absolute favorite part of this episode hands down was the part where they first walked into the house oh um, my gosh the description was so wonderful like anybody who's just listening to this as a podcast you're getting the whole mm. picture and especially right now since we can't actually see the map very easily or you know sometimes it's you know the map room might take a little extra longer to make that that put together um he's he created such a wonderful description of the scene and okay folks if you're an artist out there please oh please can you make this thing visible i want to see it i want to see that artwork i i can draw stick figures that's everyone it. has seen my stick figures and they're <laughs> fantastic uh yeah no just the way that First of all, Jeff's description of the scene, like you said, for podcast listeners, for all of us, but yeah, like spot on. I loved it. I was engulfed in it. The way he described the the uh, knight's heads moving. And honestly, I have to give it, for me, the MVP of this episode was hands down the music. The music yes. was the best thing about this episode for me. Oh. As, as soon as... Jeff's description is already setting the scene. The music that pops on as soon as they open the door was just like, oh, I'm in it, I'm in it. It was just so good. Even though he described the the, the translucent, um, it was just beautiful. The, so that was my favorite part of the episode. Um, I think I thought it was a little funny in my mind where at first, you know, Charon just had this big traumatic moment and he's like, my friend's dead, my family's in this house. And they're like, yeah, please hold on while we just uh, cut up trees. You know, 
we're gonna pep talk just give, give us a couple of seconds I thought that was funny to me in my mind you know and initially um, on my first watch through I missed uh I missed a very important detail and I'm so glad that you pointed out when we talked earlier that yeah the trees I was like why are they spending so much time on these trees I don't get it and then why are they fighting with weapons with these trees but they're magical trees that makes way too much sense now so you know it really really helps to just get that one little detail in there it's very very important so and and on top of that yeah no like it was so cool the way that whitebeard put like the spikes and like kind of like barbed up his whip like i was just thinking like i pictured my own like that is so cool uh and that would uh, be wicked awesome also guys artists yeah. please make white beards whip you know Ooh. make it look pretty cool i think uh phil waffle would like to have a poster of that in her room yeah i'll hang it right here in this space i'll hang it right, <laughs> right there i <laughs> know uh, the weapons were really cool even the way that Siv made his shivs or mm-hmm. i don't know what they decided they were they were like little um i think they were just little or, knives yeah i, I, I I mean, Whatever darts and knives, I think Sticks. they were both equal. Yeah. Sticks. Thank you, must have got it. Uh, yeah, it was so, it was really, really, really cool. Um, when it comes to the scenes, the the memories in each of the rooms. Oh, the little visions, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought for the most part, they were pretty self-explanatory, like what was going on and what yeah. what we were supposed to take from each of them. Uh, the the only thing that confused me, and I don't know if I'm just reading too much into it, that's not a surprising thing for me to do, um, is, okay, the guy took the log, he touched the log, he looked at the log, he put down the log, it stayed. Yeah. Um, the knife that the chef was holding stayed in the vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cup. The key... The cup, yes, he touched the cup, the yeah, cup the sat cup. on the table. The key was not there, which makes sense because they took the key with with them. Right. The only thing I was just like, well, why is this working? Was when the picture frame came back, but then disappeared. And I yeah. was just like, is uh, is there a reason? That the, why did the picture frame not stay? Because she touched the picture frame. My, my initial logic was, okay, it's everything they touch is, you know, becoming tangible so why didn't the picture frame stay why was it there for a couple seconds and disappeared am i reading too much into it does it matter it's like is it is it involved somehow i don't know. you know it's highly possible that you could be reading too much into it but also wasn't that picture just of the whole family so maybe there is an actual significance to it because i think wasn't that the only picture that had the whole family in it yeah and all yeah. the other ones were individuals or maybe like you know couples or whatever so maybe there is something specific about it the chat for the most part seems to be thinking i am reading way too much into it fine (laughs) maybe i am but just saying it's it's not like i haven't proven people wrong before Uh, but anyway i probably we all have our own opinions on things so it's okay (laughs) yeah no honestly probably um the key was the key Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, that was just my question. That was my question. That was my concern. But you know, I, I probably am reading too into it. Maybe Jeff will uh, think about it if it ever comes back up. Oh, I'm I'll, sure uh, he has this thing entirely planned out. I mean, he's had weeks to come up with the castle room and and to get it really developed. And I mean, it was supposed to be what like a three or four week adventure, and here we are in like week seven or eight or something like that. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure he's got everything worked out just about. So I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, if you're right, it'll be known as success awful. Thank you, Fat Mom. <laughs> that is literally my goal in life is to eventually be a success waffle. Stay tuned. That is great. But that was cute. That made me smile. Um, so let's talk about the uh most intense part of the episode, and of course my opinion. Yes. Um the the aging, uh, the the spell that aged pretty much half the party. Yeah. Your thoughts? Uh, I think that was a, a rather intense spell and a whole lot of incredibly unlucky rolls. It's it's great that Siv uh, has the amount of years that he has to where he was young enough and it doesn't affect him too much. 
I would like to see a ruggedly handsome old Civ. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, (laughs) Because I kind of like cats an awful lot. (laughs) So that would be neat. Um, But uh, for Ugo, though, I'm... I understand there was a discussion about it on the discord about how dispel works. Um, I'm glad that Jeff used the rule of cool on it because literally there was no way out for Ugo. He would have, he would have not made it out of that very well. I mean, it was geriatric Ugo, but I thought it was, I actually think I almost shed a tear whenever he was trying to see the light. Like he was trying to go towards his ancestors because he literally saw no way out. And it was it was really, really sweet that he was reaching towards Lily to help him and it didn't quite work out. But I'm so glad that James was like, well, maybe I could try this and maybe that would work. And just trying something, you know, he was already just about to die anyway. So might as well just try something to possibly save his life. And I think that's a really great trust and friendship bond that the group has to go, okay, well, you know, we're not going to stop you on this. We think that we believe in you. We think that's a good idea. Let's just give it a shot. Let's see if it works. I thought that moment with Ugo was uh, really cool. I liked the way that um, Ron decided to play it. The fact that, yes, he definitely had some comedic relief to it. But um, before that, you know, he genuinely was like, oh, gosh, I don't want to die. I don't want to do this. Like he freaked out. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a very interesting moment because I think that's the first time that Ugo's um, been scared of death. Um, And, uh, you know, he faces death all the time. He's always the one willing to sacrifice himself and be in front of the line. But I think just facing it from a different angle really scared him. And I found that interesting, especially since later on in the episode, he he said for the very first time, Ugga will say, you got it. I will hide behind the wall. Like, yeah. he, I think going forward, he's definitely going to at least, even if it's just a little bit turned, I think he's going to have a different perspective on life and death and, and what it means to genuinely put yourself out there to die I think he's going to have a different perspective on that and I think that's awesome secondly that's great I also want to say um cold candor I cold I can talk I swear you know who you are yes I saw your comment and rude it is fantastic that James uh healed white beard okay uh uh I was that okay at first someone said it like you it was not your favorite episode because white beard turned old funny but I was actually okay with him being old I was like hey at least he gets to experience old age um (laughs) but but what got to me was when he was freaking out and he was like no mage help me like he started freaking out and I was like oh no he realized that he was actually mortal I think that was one of the first times he's probably realized that oh dear I'm mortal I'm not as wonderful and fantastic as I've really built myself up to be and so that shows a side of vulnerability and maybe maybe this will change him for a little bit of good maybe maybe Uh, not we've already seen white bear be vulnerable so we don't well yeah okay it is there it is there but maybe a little bit more (laughs) you know make him more reasonable on some things I mean come on could be who knows he he did put his hand on James and he said, I'll remember this mage. Come on, that was a moment. Good. That... I bet James was like, let's Ugh. hug it out, Whitebeard. Yes, probably not, but oh, he was, no. <laughs> he was secretly thinking it. As far as the rule of cool, I 100% agree. Um, yes, I acknowledge I am coming from a non um, D&D perspective. Like, I don't know all the rules. I'm not like a D&D that's, I'm coming more from yeah, the perspective of just a watcher. Um, I like the fact he did that. I really thought that it was fun. It was interesting. Again, it was one of the most intense parts of the episode. And also, again, I'm not coming from a D&D perspective. Take that as you will. But I love, love, love the fact, whether it follows this, this rules or not, I love the fact that when the characters roll a crit one, it has severe consequences. When they roll a nat 20, it has severe advantages. I love that balance and that extreme intensity mm-hmm. because it brings, yeah, it makes it more intense. It makes it more fun. It brings the the luck of the dice. It brings just, just 
the game into it. And so I personally love that. I thought the way it was handled was beautiful. Um, and of course the world of cool, you know, he did some extreme stuff. It makes sense to let just James do what he did. And they are still yeah. dealing with a half age Sid. So it's not like it was just, okay. It wasn't like it was a quick fix or anything, but it was a really good moment that, like I said, will potentially change Ugo's perspective and maybe Whitebeard's perspective. Who knows? Yeah. But it was, um, it was, it was a really great part of the episode. I definitely think that. Um, I'm curious. I'm curious if the, I'm curious if the team is going to start figuring out like a, um, theme of the house like does each room have a certain like clue like are the, are the clues all together or are they just like random memories of the lady of the house I don't know I know I don't I'm getting know into theory and memories of the lady of the house unless the lady of the house is like the cook well she, they made it uh, what's his face um I'm doing trivia later guys I know names <laughs> um Chilron literally said that these were scattered memories of the lady of the house. Um, well, then is that, the lady of the house like a child that just so happened to saw, see all this then? Like somebody know. that's small that is unnoticeable? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. But it's very, it's, it's very intriguing. Um, uh, we have a very full, full episode today. So yeah. Uh, I do want us to spend a little bit of time. Um, it's not directly episode related, but uh, this past week on Twitter, they announced the um, the Dungeon Runs Best Moment. Uh, and I just thought we would spend just a couple of seconds talking about that. I, I know I, I don't have a Twitter, so I was very late to the game and seeing it, but I thought it was a really cool idea. I like how they did the bracket thing. I love it. I thought it was really cool. And I just wanted your opinion on um, what you thought the best moment was. Like okay, how, so do we have that bracket to show? No. Do we have that bracket to show? We sure don't because- Oh, gosh, never... that, okay. <laughs> Let me pull it up on my Twitter real quick if I can find it because- I can I just mean, tell it you had a lot too. of. It had can, a lot I, of really great moments. My memory can tell you the entire bracket on both sides just from memorizing the picture. Because you have that fantastic memory and the rest of us don't. <laughs> um, but the two final... When I was a kid, I could. I just can't anymore. <laughs> also, uh, the stream. Well, uh, yeah. So the two, the two um, final competing moments were... Um, Trevor and Hicklefist, I think, correct? Yes. And yeah. um, the, the, um, Bingle is safe again. Yeah. Personally, again. I, I, I have to say that I've said it before, I've said it on here. The, the Bingle is safe again is such a beautiful, it's beautiful scene. It's one of those things where it would allow the audience to question whether it was scripted, which is, I think, one of the things that is a testament to how great that moment was. Not only did they have this big battle, not only did they have uh, all this stuff going on, but just for James to use a card like it, that, you know, we created and we helped participate in, it was such a beacon of hope for not only the heroes of Bingle, but for everyone in I. It was just such a beautiful moment. Um, I swear not white beard not because i love him but the one moment i was actually sad was not on the bracket thing was the moment that ago killed white beard um and that's i know you maybe it's, consider that a great moment yes yeah that's what i said my, my my love for him aside i really thought it was it was the first moment in the show where the party was questioning whether they did good or they did that. Are we bad people? Are we good people? Ah. Again, with recent events of how the party shifted just recently, maybe downplays that moment. But it was the very first moment of the show they questioned their own intentions. Did we just do a bad thing? We broke into the sky. We don't know anything about Whitebeard and, and Mervis. They went. It was the first time in the show that didn't things didn't go well for them. Their intention was not to kill Whitebeard. They told Mervis. They argued. They almost got thrown overboard on his ship saying we That's won't true. kill this man for you i mean it was the first time things just went a little uh, off the rails for them and the moment that jeff said he's dead everyone the entire party was like oh yeah 
it, it was a really good moment. I thought it should have at least been um, on there, but that's just my opinion. Do you have opinions? I think that, you know, the way you described that one, yes, I think that should have been on there. But I mean, the other ones that were on there, I also feel like were as good or better. And I'm so happy that Bingle is safe again. I think that is awesome that that one won. Um, it's, I, I do feel like that was a defining moment in their, in their development. But I mean, there's some pretty other good moments in here too. And it was a really good, a really good bracket. It was really hard to choose on some of them. It was, I was very much on yeah. the fence on them. Yeah. A lot of them were really, really good. They were good moments on there for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Really like, um, moments. let's see, what was it? Uh, what was one that I, had I actually, with? I loved, loved, oh. loved someone in the, someone in the chat said it as well. I loved the, the song that J uh, Jared and Amy made together. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay, the I one have, that I had a really hard time with is the Viscount and the Liquor of the Dead. I love that scene. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it was so creepy and awesome. But it Jeez. was hard to choose with the Lily and Trevor because that was such a good scene too. I don't even remember what I went for, but Lily and Trevor won out totally. But I was like, gosh, that's, oh, it's so hard to choose. There were, yeah, there were a lot of really, 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 really good moments on there. Um, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to, I, I, I love it when the show puts out, um, fun little things for us to vote on and do. And, mm -hmm. and so I just wanted to highlight it because even though I missed most of it, I really, I just thought it was really cool. Even just looking at the, the stuff after the fact, it was just a really fun thing that they did. And I thought I was, I was overall content with the moment that was chosen. I really think Over. that they need to do this again sometime, like in 10 or 20 more episodes, totally do it again. Because, and even compare with some of the stuff that, like, even the Bingle is safe again, compare and see if that one still wins out for uh, over some different scenes in the future episodes. Because I think there totally could be that. Uh, there could be an even better scene coming our way, which would be really crazy cool. Yeah, no, and I, I actually, I, I agree. I think we should do it again with even just like some of the newer episodes involved and seeing how the brackets would play out. I also love how everyone in chat is giving different answers. I cannot stress mm -hmm. enough how much I love, I'm very opinionated guys, I am, but I really love when people don't think necessarily the same. I just love that everyone has their own thoughts, opinions, and creativity, and it's awesome. And so I love the fact that everyone has different answers. It's really exciting. I think that's um, what really helps keep this show going is you may not like see. certain areas. Like, it's, you know, it's not as great, but you might really like other areas. Well, it could be completely opposite for someone else. And yeah. we're all still fans all the same. We just, we all happen to like so many different places in this. And so... For me, yeah. whenever someone asks me, what is your favorite scene of this entire series? I'm going, you got a chair? Let's pull it up because I can't give you just one. Uh, I think like the best one that I could probably give you is maybe any moment that you were talking to uh, Lily's family on Bingle. I just, I loved that family. It was so sweet. Just her talking to Grammy Dumblestuck and to her little sisters. Oh, it's just so adorable. And, you know, here we're going to learn how to make some Molotov cocktails and you guys are going to come battle with us, even though you're like 10 years old. Like, <laughs> a lot of really cool stuff. And that's a bunch of scenes. Well, even, even in today's episode, I was talking to a few people about it um, just in the span of the last week. And I, it was, first of all, Cole Kander, hari har har, come at me, bro. <laughs> Just kidding, I love you. Uh, he wrong. said, he said, I love that everyone has completely wrong opinions. Question mark. Oh. Uh, you're hilarious. Uh, no, I think that, like, so I was talking to a few different people about this episode, and um, I was, again, I took it as a very, like, horror. To me, that's, I'm a horror fanatic. That's where my brain went. But there were some people who took the overall tone of the episode as very comedic and very like Ghostbuster like and not how I interpreted it. But I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I really, I really appreciated that perspective. And if I ever do have time to go back and rewatch episodes, I think I'll try that. I'll try to rewatch it, but with a more like lighthearted kind of playful perspective and see if it changes. Who are you going to call? Bingo heroes. 
maybe but I, I just really love that everyone does uh have their own opinions it's exciting um with that being said choo-chooing right along um don't we I, I feel we do we have a sponsor for today's episode don't we i do think so i really think so um mm-hmm. yeah uh let, let me get into this <clears throat> I have to channel my inner South here. If you guys don't know, I'm from Oklahoma and um, I try not to have a Southern accent, but today I'm going to have me a Southern accent. So (laughs) are you fixing to have a conniption fit and need to pick on someone for your own enjoyment? Or do you reckon you have a beast or someone who thinks they are a beast who could give you, give a fella a run for his money? So we got a tournament for you. We're looking for motivated individuals to waller in our state-of-the-art sludge mud rustling pit, the finest this side of an Come down here to Boster, or as the locals like to call it, Boster, to hop on in our winner take all bracket. The supreme finalist will not only walk away with his life, but also a special surprise prize to be announced soon. Disclosure, entering this tournament consents to potential and likely death. Coercion into entering is entirely allowed so long as the coercer bets accordingly over the minimum value on the coerce. Play responsibly, not respectfully. Oh, yes, just so Chad knows, we have so many, we have people from Ein calling us all over the place, trying to, trying to get on the show, you know? We've got sponsors all day, every day. Everywhere. Uh, we just have to, we have to screen. We have a big screening process. Uh, yeah, we do. We got it. Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. So that was fun. I can't wait to find out what that prize is. I wonder if we know, huh? Hmm. Interesting. Um, but that was a really good segment that will switch right into our much beloved, much waited team force of evil versus team force of good trivia go team force of good go team force of good go okay. team force of good before you get ahead of yourself woman what? uh <laughs> so i just wanted to give a little background on how the community kind of came up with this because um i've said it before on the watch party myself that i view uh, the, the the force cards and the advantages and stuff as us gods, us being the watchers, um, kind of duking it out in our own way, whether it be up here invisibly in the sky or like fighting in the ambulance, however it works in your head. I just definitely view it as us taking a side, taking a stand and going at it. And I think that the community has kind of embraced that as well. And there are a few of us who really kind of pushed that line, but it's just like a fun little um, competitive, playful thing that the community has put together. And so for those of you who don't know, Team Force of Evil has cookies and cake and Team Force of Good apparently has pie. Choose your team wisely. You can also be part of Team Distress. But they're already gone, so it, it really doesn't matter. Bye. So anyway, without further ado, let's bring Sean up here real quick. Let's bring the man, the god of trivia, the god of knowledge, who is going oh, to be hosting nice. it himself. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Can you everything in his own dungeon, man. He's he's magic. Yes, that's, yes. that's the background I see when we play in our mod squad game. It's fantastic. So, Sean, I'm going to uh, quickly go over the rules. If you have anything to add or if I leave anything out, please jump in. Um, So the way that this game is going to be played today to make sure that it is a fully team effort, there are three members of Team Force of Good and there are three members of Team Force of Evil. The way it works is there will be three rounds with four questions each. There is a bench in this game guys so there will only be two members of each team competing at the same time um one person each round or each like question that'll be a show on clarification on there but one person is designated as the answer for each team the team has 20 seconds to collaborate talk figure out if they want to help each other out with the answers but the one person designated to give the answer their final answer their final say is what is 
put out there. Um, it's similar to the last week. If you get your question right, you get a point. Fantastic. If you don't, the other, the other team gets a chance to steal. However, if you try to steal and you get it wrong, you will also get deducted points. So choose wisely. Every member from each team has to sit out on at least sit on the bench at least one time. This allows for it to be a cohesive team effort and everybody has to participate and play. Woo, where is Team Cheesecake? That month, we have the cake. Team Force of Evil, choose wisely. Sean, did I leave anything out? Any, any other thing that needs to be said? Did I do that beautifully? Yep, you covered everything. Fantastic. So Sean is going to announce the topic of each round. We'll get the appropriate players up on the screen. Let this showdown begin. You also have a force of evil. Okay, so before we start, we did some magical stuff behind the scenes, but before we start, I do want to announce who's on said team. So on the amazing, fantastic, magical Team Force of Evil, you have, of course, me, Phil Waffle, the captain. You have Mr. Oro43, because I said that correctly, right? Yep. Yeah, this pronunciation is hard. And of course, we have the goddess herself. Rim faded. Obviously, the two of us will be playing round one. On team not so great, kind of puny force of <coughs> good, you have Snake Master, <laughs> Queen Scarlet, and of course, Bander Slice. So I'm ready to hopefully win. <clears throat> You're okay. going down, dear. Just saying. No! <laughs> round one will be characters. Uh, I'm looking for the name of the characters, not the actor. If the answer is James, oh, gosh. say Morgan. I'm going to put the character. Wait, wait. Hold on, Sean. You're doing that thing you always do for me when your what? mic gets super low. So I need you to talk into the microphone. Who's the... Is that better? 
Yeah. yeah All right, Oro, Oro, you take you take the final answer thing, and we'll just collab. Right. So okay. he's giving me the answer. Yeah. Okay. Snake, you give the answer because I do not trust myself. You're gonna have to okay. do it eventually, girl. But anytime. Okay. <laughs> okay. Round one is characters. Looking for the name of the character, not the actor. Okay. So okay. We're going to start off, the first question is going to go over to Team Force of Evil, because it is Fair Waffle Show. <laughs> give it, give it, give it. First question. When the heroes of Bingo find the Storm Warden, which character says, we are going to have to kill them all? When they find the Storm Warden, going to have I'll to go. kill them all. It's Ugo because of all the orcs that are around the Storm Warden. <laughs> That is correct. Wait, wait, Oro. Oh, high five! Who <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that? Snake I'm Master. Excited. During a romp in the rain, who goes bright burn? During a romp in the rain, who goes bright burn? That's correct. Is that an episode? Oh my God. <sighs> That's the name of the episode. You guys are, you guys are a team. You can, Queen Scott, you can talk. Oh, oh that's the name of the episode. Yeah, Rump oh, in the Rain. I'm going through the episodes in my head one by one. Isn't that the one where, like, Lily, like, Ugga's heart gets broken? No, because that was during Stranger's Fate. Oh, my goodness. I'm dumb. Time limit? I'm a brat. Yep. <laughs> All right, what was the quote one more time? The quote is, goes bright burn. The the entire question is, during a romp in the rain, who goes bright burn? I'm going to have to say James, because if I remember correct, the bright burn scene was the horse. No, that was just just a couple episodes ago when he burns the plant. Oh, When he's flying above the plant. Yep. Ron says that James just went bright burn. Okay. Um, Wait, we didn't get a chance to steal? Okay, you got it right. (laughs) You got it right. It was a joke. It was a joke. Okay. It was a joke. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fail off. Which, which character's mini broke within three minutes of being introduced onto the show? Sid's. No. It's, is, it's, that, it's, is that your answer? It's, it's Fahima's. Her hand breaks Ooh. off. Right yeah. when Jeff hands it to her. Actually, it's when it gets handed back to her. It's already made down the cast. It comes back to her as soon as she gets it again. It is the hand. That is correct. Go. Oh, good job. Team here. 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 Which way do I? Okay. <laughs> to your right. It wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you get a point. Snake You're Master. Right. What is the name of the Achirai trainer in Winkbird? Wheezy. No, what is his name? Er. Wheeze. Because he's nick- the one who talked like this. That's his nickname. What's oh. his name? Oh, no. It's like I'm Weasington or something like that. Wheeze. Uh, Weasington, Weez. I do Jeopardy every week. I really should be better at this, but I'm not. Mm. It's like Weasington or something, unfortunately. Is, is that your answer, Weasington? <laughs> yeah, I'll say that's my answer to put something on the board. Fail off, would you like to steal? I would love to steal, and it is Wizello. Zello. That, is, that yep. is correct. Oh, no. <laughs> and that concludes round one. Round two will be episodes. We're looking for titles or numbers. And now we will do the switch out. Yeah, we're going to do our little quick screen. We'll be back faster, I promise. Team Force Evil. For some good? Good, 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 good. You also have a force of evil.
Okay. Now. Okay. I made a mistake before we break before we branched off. The round two is actually locations. Okay. Round three will be episodes. Uh, locations. Last question answered was answered correctly by Team Force of Evil, so this one will go to Team Force of Good. What's the score standing? The score at the end of round one was FOE, Force of Evil 2, Force of Good 1. All right, we got to we got to make it up. We got to make it up. We're going to Okay. So We got to we got to show our name here. Right, so we Force got of Evil this answered. Spear. We're going to Force of Good. Force of Good by title or number. In which episode did we learn about Ugo's acrophobia? Ugo's acrophobia, that would be episode A Way Up. That is correct, A Way Up. Uh, episode three, I believe. Yes, correct. Yeah, I knew it was something super early. Couldn't remember which one. Uh -huh. And I had to define acrophobia in my head there for a sec. Oh. <laughs> Force of Evil, by title or number, which episode had all the cast in costumes? Oh, it was the Halloween one. The Halloween one. That would be correct. <laughs> but, but what's the name or the number? Oh, what was it? Because there was something Duke in it, and then they didn't actually go back and see the Duke. I don't, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm just, I, episode 21 or something. Is that your answer? <laughs> I, I think he's locked up. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with that one just cause that's the math is trying, I'm trying to do the math there. <clears throat> Team Force of Good, would you like to steal? You got any idea there? I, I know it's in the twenties. That's all I got. It is in the twenties. Give me a moment. Uh, 20, 19, 19, 19, 19. I believe it's episode twenty-four. That is correct. Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> That's a lot. I had to literally. Ca I had to literally <laughs> count from when Jeff lost his eye patch. Oh. Or when Jeff got his eye patch. Wow, that's kind of. Wow, yeah. that's really. That's, that's what I was trying okay. to do. Oh man. Okay. Yep, so we had Force of Good. By number or title, in which episode does Fukima <laughs> try to punch someone? Quote in their stupid face with my totally rad punch. Hey, what was the question again? It just, my internet went out a little bit. Okay. In what episode does Fahima try to punch someone in their stupid face with my totally rad punch? <laughs> is, it, is it Argo or is it Evil Go? It's Argo. That's oh, it's Argo. I'm <laughs> um, um, going to need an answer. Uh, seven? Seven? What do you... Th is it that low, I think? Episode I don't know. Episode six was War of the Wardens, which is what inspired the Force of Good card. Actually, I'm going to say episode eight. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with you. I believe. Force of Evil, would you like to oh. steal? Ugh. <sighs> I got nothing. <laughs> I, I don't know either. That was during the extraction of Sagas von Fleek, episode oh. 17. Wow. Yep, that, okay. That's right, because she finally got her hands free. Oh. <sighs> it was after she finally got her hands free because she spent most of that fight with Lily. For, uh, team Force of Evil. By number or title, after which episode did the dungeon rundown start? I want to say 11, but I have no idea. 
Right. Making up numbers. Like, it started in the middle of July. Is that the second or third week of July? And the series started at the end of, in the middle of April, I think. So I want to say it was like 13. It, uh, you're giving me the answers, Oro? And you're saying 13? That is incorrect. Uh, it was Grim Fetted, episode 11. 11. Yes! And now we'll be going over to round three. So we'll be switching out. You know, for some good? Good, you also have a force of evil Little bit it's of a mix tied, up. isn't it? Yep, it's three three. Um, it's tied. All right. Snake, so Snake Master was supposed to change out, but seems to be some internet problems. So, yeah. Hey. <laughs> so we'll be heading off to um, location. I love you, Queen Scarlet. Uh, after we had the last question, so we'll start off with Force of Good. What is the name of Fahima's hometown? Oh, um, Axbright. Yes. Right. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Force of Evil. Agreed. <laughs> Force of Evil. What is the name of the inn where Opal works? Opal? Yeah. Who is Opal? The inn. <laughs> I'm going to say it is clearly Opal. Rem, do you know who that is? No idea. Um, I'm going to say it's probably, I feel Opal, wasn't that the guy? I'm going to say the only inn I remember, and that is the Rose. No, it's a bar. I don't ever call the inn called that's a bar. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with, I don't know, but I know who Opal is now. Opal is that chick who served them food with the noodle beard and, um, I'm not giving the other team a hint. I don't know the answer though. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Snake. <sighs> yeah, you don't either. Vander Price. Oh, I'm finally uh -oh. back. Okay. Even so either. what, what was the question again? It stopped on me. So what is Opal the name of was the, the inn that... where Opal works? The inn where Opal it's works? Not Rosy Cheeks, but the other one that they went to after Lily's drunken escapade. 
after Lily's drunken escapade. I just set the scene for you, Justin. Oh, yeah. what's the answer? Um, that's the, uh, I already knew who Opal was first. I know, and I told so, you because I'm dumb. Because <laughs> um, I'm stupid. No, you're not. <laughs> Hush, I go. <laughs> yeah, I'm drawing a blank. blank. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a to blank do. too, huh? Lost, and I lost, literally just uh, watched that episode like three uh, times this week, trying to find that darn cup. That would be the old lantern. Ah! Uh, Force of good. <laughs> What is the name of the city of Scrap? <laughs> Do I have to say it like? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, okay, because that was, oh, I don't even know how to technically pronounce Try your that. best. Try your best. Because it was something like Gawabubble. <laughs> well, I can do that too. Gawabubble. No, like literally Gawabubble. Is he right, Sean? Something like that. It's ugh. you don't have to try and say it as they did it. Jeff does say the name in plain English at one oh, point. Oh, he did. At one point, all he does. the Englishes. Go wobble. Then I then I missed it if he said it in plain English. <sighs> and these are all episodes I have literally watched this week, looking wow. for that cup. I have not studied for the record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> I didn't study. I wanted to find that stupid cup. Oh, uh, the cup. Fahima's cup that nobody wants. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stumped. Are you, Vander? Uh, Gobble. I would figure like something like gobble. Let's uh, go with gobble. Gawu. Because Bebaloob is Bilu. Yeah. Team Force of Evil. Yeah, would you we'll like, go would you like to How about steal? That? I uh, thought it was called yes, the uh, City again. of Scrap, so <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I got, is, I got nothing. It's pronounced Yabakul. Yabakul. I just thought, see when and they talk, I just think the next, really cute. the next episode when he's doing the recap, that's when he says it. During the recap, he reads it out yeah, as bye -bye. Yabakul. Okay, I didn't watch. Uh, I didn't watch that one. <laughs> Coming down to last I'll question, watch. the score is Force of Good 2. Force of Evil 2. Comes Wait, down to Force of Good 2? Yeah, you just answered He's that. He's all wrong. Let's just go. Point. Let's just go. Well, we should be 3-3. Three, three. Three. It's 3-4. Four, 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 three. Evil 4, us point. 3. It yeah, went, we're losing. We're losing came, by one point. Yeah. Okay. And, oh, my God. Did my math wrong. You're right. Four minus one is three, not two. Very good. So, fog, f force of good three, fog, uh, force of evil two. Coming down to the last question, over to force of evil. What location does Jeff describe as a museum of terror? The museum of terror. A museum this, of terror. A. This is a this is amazing questions to ask someone who's never rewatched an episode. I'm right there with you. <laughs> A museum. You were supposed to study a museum of terror. I didn't study either. <laughs> yeah, but I had the events going. I had them popping. Okay, a museum of terror. Give me a second. A museum of terror. Ooh. I'm doing deduction skills. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, thought had a, I thought you had a breakthrough with the ooh. <laughs> no. No. I'm just excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, Museum of Terror. It's definitely more in the recent ones. I know this. It's more in the recent ones. My memory's there. Okay. Ooh, ooh, I got it, I got it. What is it? Okay. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it is the uh, Viscount's house. Unless Grimfaded wants to disagree with me, that's my final answer. I'll go with that because I I'm completely clueless because apparently I don't Force, pay attention to the show. Force of good. Would you like to steal? A muse okay. Oh. Are you back with us, Ingrid? Are you back with us, Ingrid? Uh, I am back with you. I'm finally back with you. Okay. We're losing you, you a me? little bit. Um, oh, oh my god, can I have another guest? Cause I'm gonna... <laughs> I literally think yeah, it's just We're getting me. a little bit of wine from you. Uh, can you um, hear me at all? If they get it wrong, Sean, bit. do I get another guest? Because no, I swear no. I know the answer now. Uh, <laughs> if they get it wrong, I will give you uh, a second shot. Okay, thank so, you, because I think I know it. 
Um, Do you need the question again? Do you think maybe, what are you thinking? Castle. Yeah. I want to say the castle rum. I know that's not it. It's a trick too. question. Yes. Are you in? Okay, yes. then yes, we say the castle rum. Yes, yes. That is incorrect. Fell waffle. Okay. What is your okay. second guess? My memory just just takes it just takes a second to get there. It just takes a second to go back. I'm pretty confident a museum of terror was described as the Ashen Mage's Tower. It was that was the tower he described as a museum. No. What? No. Okay. When, when they are inside no. Earth, when they are inside Earth and first lodestone, he's How did I not get my voice cast? He's describing it. Uh, you know, it's got it's empty and it's clear. He's got a walkway, and Jared goes, "Oh, like a museum," and Jeff turns and goes, "Yeah, a museum of terror." I love it. You really did your homework for these ones, Sean. I <laughs> applaud you. You, you two were oh, supposed to be the big the big guns who knew all the trivia, so I dug deep. Sean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to call you out on the street, but I'll let that one go. I'll let that one go. <laughs> I, I am very happy with these questions. The more it challenges me, the happier I am. No, it's awesome. It's really awesome. Well, just keep in mind, you may have won the battle, but you did not win the war. <laughs> and Prepare for that, round two, done and, correctly. And with that, I will bow out and let you guys fight it out. Beat me, you wish. Your head I just served on a dish. Oh! <laughs> wow, he did done good. Say oh, that. man. Uh, <laughs> Cap Cap Captain Crunch, in case you're curious, Team Force of Evil won. Just kidding. <laughs> um, it was rigged, but it's fine. Uh, that was fun. I I will uh, I will um, humbly humbly lose, uh, Justin. That was great. That was great. Fantastic. Uh, that was fun. We'll do that again sometime. Um, anyway, while I lick my wounds, um, maybe it's time to to tell the the winner of the mud pit who are yeah. uh, what they're gonna win. Shall we, man behind the curtain? Yes. Man Let's do it. For those. Who participate there can only be one winner the winner gets a brand new cup <laughs> the champion of the mud pit will get this brand new cup what's so amazing about this mysterious cup you ask i know you're wondering does it have magical properties does it grant wishes is its ultimate key to eternal life who knows nobody and i can seem to figure it out before you risk your life thinking you're going to get rich, by the way. Full disclosure, this cup has zero retail value. <laughs> so do you want to try and solve the mystery of this cup? Or maybe you want to just put it on the shelf for decorations. Either way, one thing is for certain. It is undeniably a pretty cup. <laughs> just a pretty cup. <laughs> it is just a pretty cup. <laughs> so I hope the winner of the mud pit is happy with their prize. You know, it happens. So that was a beautiful segue to our next last segue, Wounds Still a Lickin'. Um, interview with the Watcher. Today we are interviewing the amazing, the fantastic, the mysterious, Mr. Kaiba. Yay! <laughs> Hello. Oh, sir, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm pretty fantastic. Well, no, I'm not going to lie. I'm very depressed. How, how is, how is Ingrid? <laughs> I'm well, feeling you know pretty what? good well, here, but I had a really good buddy. <laughs> well, full props to uh, Sean on the trivia. That that had me scratching my yes, head. I like to think I'm pretty man. well uh, versed in the show, but oh man, he dug deep on this. Yeah, no, Sean is, a, Sean is the god of trivia for a reason. Um, his questions were amazing. Um, Sean mm -hmm. is sometimes amazing he's all right he's like uh but we're not here to talk about sean we're not here to talk about you sir why don't you tell us um for those who don't know uh how and what got you into the show uh well honestly the uh, my kids they love dungeons and dragons uh they uh, were perusing through youtube happened to stumble across the show i think it was around episode five or six um just kind of backtrack from there, caught back up, and then 
eventually started watching it live, started submitting the Force of Good and Force of Evil submissions, and eventually started contributing to the show, and just uh, eventually just fell more and more in love with it. That's <laughs> awesome. So yeah. you got involved in the Discord, right? So how did you get involved with the Discord? Uh, honestly, I've in the past, I've had pretty bad experiences in Discord, but... Uh, one thing I noticed when watching the show live is, you know, how great the community is, how much there's just so much love all throughout it, during the show. Everybody's just having a good time just talking and, ha and just enjoying what uh, what Jeff and the cast, the, the crew, everybody brings to the table. Um, just I, I figured, you know what, why not? Uh, I'll just kind of. Uh, just kind of peruse it and just kind of hang out for a little while and then and so just, what were your first thoughts about it <laughs> yeah it, honestly it was pretty much just like the the general chat you know everybody just having a great time and everybody just yeah there's no bickering there's no fighting that it's just everybody having a good time and either talking about what's going on in their lives and the everything else or sharing good memes which i always appreciate <laughs> um or, you know, just making stuff up and, you know, fan fiction and stuff like that, but all very clean. Yes, very much so. Yeah, I, I, I love I love that you, not that I've loved that you've had bad experiences, but I'm <laughs> saying I love that the, this experience was better for you, you know, like it kind of showed and kind of proved that there can be really awesome communities out there. So I, that that's the part I think is, is lovely. Um, and speaking of like Discord and caffeine names and usernames, can you tell us where Kaibuck comes from and why you chose <laughs> that as your username? Uh, actually, Kaibuck is my name backwards. <laughs> okay, now you phonetically have okay, your name. Okay, hold on. How do we do this? <laughs> oh, it's okay. right there. Kaibuck. Kaibuck? Kaibuck, yes. Kaibuck. Okay, I'm sorry. You're born given name that is Kaibuck? Like, where is that? Oh, come it's my from? last name. It's my last name. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say that's fascinating. Yep. Oh. Uh, yeah. Good Polish name. Oh, okay. <laughs> that okay, that makes a lot of sense. It sounds kind of Polish. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is really nice. cool. That is really cool. Uh see, th that's why I love asking. Everyone has their own story. It's fun. It's a little like um part of your personality. So now yeah. that I know that that's that is interesting. Um <laughs> I also want to ask you in general, I know the answer, but for those who don't, why don't you tell everybody if you're into D&D &D and um, how this show inspired you to do whatever? Uh, yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, I got into D&D &D when I was in high school. Um, just, gosh, uh, I, I guess it was maybe 3.5. Um, you know, did Shadowrun, a couple other different variations of uh, role-playing games. You know, good times all throughout. Um, right now, kind of take parts from the show with my kids being interested, bring characters from the show into their game. Uh, the kids absolutely love Joral. Uh, so, yeah, you know, my friend, so good to see you. Yeah, uh, bringing, him oh, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, bringing him into things, uh, actually almost made my daughter cry, uh, because, uh, the, big bad guy that I have uh, right now in the game summons elementals and uh, I randomly rolled and they told him to spend his money on one thing. And while he was away, his shop burned it. Maybe was fine. He was selling charcoal. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> If that's not proof life is pain, I don't know what it is. Oh my gosh. He was like, I have charcoal. Might as well sell charcoal like lemons and lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> well, for the that's record, the I, the fire elemental, you know? Right? No, for the record, I wanted you to share that because I, I didn't actually tell you this, but uh, the amount of people that I talked to in passing that genuinely love like when you recap your stories with your kids so many people love that i don't even think you realize how many people are like really in tuned and excited every time you have something new to share so uh it's, it's great and keep keep sharing because those little stories make everybody happy <laughs> um there's also something else that you do on the discord slash this community mm -hmm. do you want to share what it is yeah uh around episode 36 or 37 i started doing uh episodes without context uh, nah. so yeah, uh, definitely something I really enjoy doing. Um, uh, 
I forget exactly why I started doing it. Just <laughs> thought I'd have some fun with it. <laughs> but, um, you know, in the spoiler discussion, sometimes people pop in in order to kind of get ahead of the game before they watch the show uh, on the YouTube on Fridays. Uh, so just kind of something I started doing to have a little bit of fun. Uh, so people who might want to get a little bit of a spoiler, but maybe not the full show, and then kind of piece mm. it together, kind of have a little fun with it. Oh, I see what you so mean. It's, it's, so almost like no. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's so it's an awful lot like whenever uh, I guess that last Avengers, the end all Avengers one. I can't remember Infinity War or whatever. That everyone tried to do the same thing and was like putting all these different pictures up and stuff for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind spoilers. Of. Like, don't give spoilers, but everyone's like giving pictures for it instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, I love that too because if anyone can tell by now, I, I love I love puzzles. I love like figuring things out, and so it's really fun. Because, like you said, it, it's almost like a oh, well, why does this image get picked? Uh, and so I actually I know we we were going to talk about some of your favorites, but I asked uh, Banjo Slice before the show if she'd seen any of them, and she said no. So mm-hmm. I thought it'd be kind of fun for the ones that you and I picked out if we could mm-hmm. see if she can guess either the episode or. Uh, what 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 is in context, pretty much? Mm-hmm. I will try my best. <laughs> All right, can you see okay. it? Okay, yes. So <laughs> we have, uh, I guess, a dungeon with with a fire down this down the aisle, like uh, torches, and then uh, looks like a spider in the stars, and then Siv, which is a man poking a bear with a very long stick. <laughs> Just for the record, Ingrid, everyone is staring at the same screen. Yes, that's what's on the screen. I know. I, the spider is what's getting me thrown off here, okay? You know, what if somebody wants to just listen to this, okay? I'm trying to trying to be like Jeff. You know, maybe maybe this gets to be on a podcast. Who knows? Um, <laughs> I, I could dream. I could dream. Um, so, I don't... Let's see. Siv poking a bear has got to be obvious. But also, I like to... I'm thinking that it has something to do with walking into the dwarf cave, uh, dwarf cave, or the dwarf city because of all the lights that were on the walls. But I don't understand where the spider comes into play. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's it's if I can take this one, Kai Puck, is is that not the episode where they go into the four former forges? Yes. Sip poking the bear. Sip poking the bear refers to him poking the king. Yes. The spider. The spider refers to obviously the big ass scary spider that they fought. And then the nice the nice little uh nice entryway is the the entry to not even the four former forges, but the (laughs) the entry before the four former forges. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And and did didn't you want to add something to that, Kai Bob? Like what 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 did you like about this one specifically? Yeah, this one was actually one of the first ones that I did, but it was also mm. one where Jeff even uh, commented on it, saying that I really nailed the what he was envisioning for the entrance or something along those lines. I don't want to put words in his oh, mouth. Oh, neat. But uh, he, he mentioned that, you know, I really did a good job capturing that. So it instantly became one of my favorite ones that I put together. All right. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good one. I'm sorry I failed at this one. Give me another one. Maybe I can do better. <laughs> no, no, no. Apologize. It's all in good fun, girl. I'm just teasing you, and you know it. I'm just. I know. Fun. I know. Okay. So, girl can dream. So we have two chicks that are doing that that overly done meme, arguing with the cat in the chair at a dinner plate, and uh, a meme below. Not a meme. A gif below. Two guys. You are my number one guy. <laughs> uh. uh Okay. Um, gosh, I don't know about the number one guy. I would figure I'd have to do something with... <gasps> Wait! This has got to be the episode where Whitebeard is thinking about having Uggo as becoming his first mate uh, instead of Loudmouth. And this is the like the beginning of the last call argument, like a whole beginning of this, like where Fahima's getting mad about things and Lily's getting upset about stuff. So I think it's that episode. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everybody's getting <laughs> mad at Siv. Everybody's pointing and yelling at Siv. And Siv ends up storming off, but you know, you are my number one guy. 
Got excited there, guys. The snake master isn't the only one that can do a white beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it, Skybuck, you totally should have submitted a white beard impression for the video, the fan video. You did oh, the white beard one. You know, maybe next year. Maybe next year. No more after it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we have one more to show. I think, I don't know if this last one was. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. This <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. No, you so don't have to have... guess this one unless you want to. No, I think I can do this. Uh, okay. So we have. <laughs> We have a, a person that is not sure which direction they need to go. They have all these different arrows and stuff coming out of their brain. They look stressed out. And then a little girl kissing a kitty. And then the genie from Aladdin with his jaw down pointing at something like, oh, my gosh, I'm astonished. So I'm thinking this is at least the episode where uh, Siv and Lily kiss. And so at least there's that. And... They're not sure which direction they need to go. They're still on the ship, um, confused about what's going on around them. And I don't understand about the astonished part with the genie. So uh, maybe Fahima is astonished that they kissed. I, I don't know. Uh, that was supposed to be uh, Jessica where she was just like, oh, my God, they kissed um but it's it was perfect. more you know she is a genasi and so it was kind of no it was uh, absolutely perfect yeah it really was and perfect. uh you know all the air was going everywhere was kind of james with the uh analysis paralysis just you know just not quite sure where to go what to do over analyzing everything so so i was right yeah yes. you were right. i got You're two right. out of three yeah buddy <laughs> yeah no you good you good oh thank uh, goodness that, that that takes back uh, all the things that I forgot in the trivia. There we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> last question for you, Kai Buck, unless you have any other thing you want to just say to the community. I'm curious what episode or what moment. You, I know you said you just kept watching and kept watching it. But I, I, I think there always, there's for everyone, there's always that one moment or one episode where you're like, I'm in it. I'm in it for the long <laughs> haul. And did, but what was that moment for you? Uh, I would say... Um, the moment where they were falling through the sky and Lily had the earpiece and she's uh, saying, we're falling, no plans. No plans. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of that, oh crap. And when they all do manage to cast the feather fall and Lily's still going. Yeah. And, that was an and, intense you know, it, it definitely, you know, they're, you know, like I tell the kids in their game, when they're playing, Actions have consequences, something you may not realize there's going to be an effect. There's going to be things that happen. And, you know, you can save everybody. You can try to save everybody, but you can't always make that happen. So that kind of, that's kind of the moment that really grabbed me with the show. I think that's yeah, a very common moment with a lot of people. I, I mean, it was pretty good to start off with, but that's really, I think, a lot of the clinching moment is, oh, geez, we're on episode four five and we're already having somebody potentially die and mm -hmm. it was just you had to choose you had to choose and it was really really well played out oh my goodness that was such a great scene but i think everybody in the studio and just across anybody who's ever watched it we all held our breath i think that was the first really hold your breath moment <gasps> is it gonna are they gonna make it is she gonna make it oh no and i think that really clinched it for everyone Mm -hmm. It's good. good. Yeah, one. I agree. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. And Kaiba, before we let you go, because you know we're, we're amazing at um, never sticking to the an hour schedule. Uh, <laughs> is there any other, you know, anything you just want to tell the community? Any thoughts, feelings, concerns? Just, I mean, now is your your time to shine, my friend. You know, um, you know, everybody be safe. Everybody stay healthy. Um, you know, make sure that you do everything you can to make sure that not only yourself stay stays healthy, but also those that you love. Um, just do everything you can to make sure that we all make it through this in one piece and, and healthy. Um, aside from that, you know, as a wise man once said, you know, humankind, be both. Be both. Yay. Thank you, my friend. And I will thank probably you. talk to you soon. You're amazing. Absolutely. And you're such a joy. All right. Thank you. Oh, we have, uh, guys, we have one more thing for you before we kick it. 
Um, so, you know, very seriously, the last, especially the last couple of episodes, they've always, they've had a theme, you know, they've had a moral and a lesson at the end, whether that be what is right, what is good, what is good, what is evil, what is, what is okay and what is not, whatever the lesson may be, every episode has one. And uh, with the help of my good friend, Gorbin Played, him and I put together what we think is definitely the lesson of this uh, last week's episode. So let's cut to a clip. I right, think so... Siv looks good how he is. Yes, you look good, Siv. But I agree we should Distinguished, be right? Distinguished. Gray's good and distinguishing. And it looks... Yes, Jeff, Jeff. People look... You're it, so damn handsome. It you only cut it gets, out right It now. only gets better, Jeff. <laughs> you lose an eye, you get hotter. You know, it's not very often that happens. What's your name? My name's... What do you want? Anyone else have the hots for hot bartender? Yeah, sure. I think maybe. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. We're looking for someone. Who are you looking for? Should we trust you? <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> you don't care if we should trust you? No. You bought my beer, that's the extent of it. I don't need to talk to you. Hey. I think I think Lily found him kind of mysterious. Well, sure. Yeah. He was very mysterious. Yeah, and had no time for her. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes sometimes, yeah. unfortunately. You used the wrong adjective for that bartender. Surly? Hot. Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> With your dirty minds, everyone thinking about the hot bartender. The, the eye patch is gone, so all the, all the hotness oh, yeah. is left. You look very distinguished. <laughs> he looked great either way, but wow, he's smoking now. Like, oh my gosh. Just... If you wish to converse with me, you must do it inside the zone of truth. <laughs> It's a little bit of the gray in the beard, you know? Yeah, yeah. When he came back with the beard, I, I was quite envious. I just want to point out that the only reason for this entire adventure is for everybody to get on the same page that Gray looks good. <laughs> gray totally looks sick. So, Jeff, Jeff, one thing that we can all be on the same page about is no matter what you do, no matter what you lose or how you change, you, sir, look good. Uh, Cheers to Jeff's hotness, everybody. Anyway, Jeff looks good. Uh, um, so as we end the show, everybody, what's, what is in store for us next week? What is on the second floor of these this amazing house? Is Wiker going to make it a few more episodes? Am I going to have to be depressed next week? Stay tuned on the next episode of The Dungeon Run. Thank you for joining us. And as always, guys, humankind. Be bold. Be bold.